today we live, today we breathe, today we know that we are strong when we are weak, today we trust, we overcome, take every chain that kept us slaves and throw them off, we're not waiting for permission, we defy our inhibition, like your middle name is fearless.
receive Jesus into our lives, but that he's already received us into his. In my own life it means forgiveness, when I know I deserve the fall. It called me out of my darkness and carried me to the cross. In a moment my eyes were open and I bought Gospel that makes a way combination we got to work with it amen thank you lord as we get started this morning i know i'd spoke earlier I, and i want to for some reason i just feel in my heart and in my spirit that uh testimonies is important to all of us i i think uh like uh sister kim has testified when you not always when you get back into things you don't know, but all of a sudden, Brother Curtis, the water seems a little deeper out there. And uh, we have to have that person. We have to have that Savior, that one that's going to be there when we start to sink. And the Word of God says when Peter cried out that uh, Jesus, Brother Curtis, immediately reached down and saved him. And uh, I think there's been a lot of times when I need that saving grace, that saving power. Uh, there's been times when I've... Um, of course, you folks that know, I, I work for an agency that uh, does mental health counseling. We do children and adults, and, and uh, we have a, an autistic program. So uh, part of my job is, is uh, Sister Gay, you don't like to call it selling, but part of my job is, is uh, community outreach. I go find business uh, when sometimes there's not a lot of business there. And, and there's days, Sister Betty, I come back to the office, and I'll have that smile on my face, and I just feel like I've done a good job. And then there's days I come back and I think, if this is the best I got, I need to do something else. We know that don't, that doesn't only stop in a secular perspective, but also has the same condensation if we're not careful and commitment uh, in our spiritual life. There's been times, Sister Donna, why I felt like I just hit it on the head. And there's been times I got behind that truck, stern wheel, and said, Lord, if this is the best I got, I got to have some help. And I think that sure honesty that we share with each other when we know that, that we're at our limits. It's going to take God to come in. This morning as I listened to prayer request after prayer request, sometimes we get to the point, Brother Sid, where I have give all I've got, and now God's got to come in and do something that we are calling a miracle. A lot of times I go into these homes and these families want to walk in and me say a few words and sprinkle a little dust maybe and their kids better. Well, it don't always happen that way. They're products sometimes of their environment. We spend this county and all the counties and localities that, that, that we work in spends a lot of money on our children. A lot of money. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if we're not careful, we take them back, Sister Gail, and we drop them right back into the same environment that we removed them from. And we've done nothing to prepare the change. The child comes back. He's been... He's been 
His self-esteem's been raised. He's been given an opportunity to, to, to know that he's loved and that he's cared. And all of a sudden, we drop him back into an environment where none of that's there. None of that exists. Well, same thing for us. Have you ever felt that God don't love you? I know it's hard to see. You know what I'm saying? But there's, there's times when, I, when Sister Don and I were sharing this morning about witnessing the folks and there's, there's prayer is always appropriate but prayer may not always be received in the spirit that we want to be received in. I've asked folks before, uh, would you like for me to pray? I've, I've made the mistake, Brother Curtis, to say, would you like for me to pray with uh, for you? And me, and this is just Hank, you guys work it out for where you're at, but any time I said I will pray for you, if I'm not careful, they cast all of that burden on me. Well, Brother Hank's praying for me. You are absolutely right. But I've learned over the years that I would rather say, let me pray with you so that way you and I together can get where we need to go. So all of a sudden, it's not more important to me than it is to you. So let me pray with you. And I've heard the pastor say many, many times that he's been prompted in Walmart. Somebody will come up and see him and ask for prayer. And right there, church on aisle five is instant. Let's pray right now. But you got to get to a comfort level to be able to do that. It's not all of us can do that. There's been times where I want to pray with them so bad, Sister Betty, but I didn't feel that urging that the discerning spirit inside of me said not not today and I do get after that I want God to tell me when when is the time because I we know real quick if those that got ahead of God and goes that got that fell behind God was the ones that got destroyed by the enemy so we always want to meet God right where God is and the only way we do that is just to stay active at this every day. I'm not asking anybody telling themselves, but uh, I'll tell old Hank, there has been times where I have been so busy in my life that the day will run by me before I say, oh, Lord, I hadn't even prayed today. Have you ever woke up and your mind be on? I mean, like this right here, you know the next ten things that has to happen before nine o'clock? And shame on me for not spending that directional time to put it in God's hands immediately. Because at the end of the day, when I made a mess of it, like the song says, I say this prayer, I want him to come and fix it. But if I had a, if I had a message titled this morning, it would be, Stay Connected to the Vine. How we always know that is we have got to stay connected. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's go to John chapter 15. These will be very familiar scriptures this morning. But I, wanna, I want us to understand that staying connected is where we have to be. Start reading that John chapter 15 verse 1. It says, and this is all in red in my Bible. It says, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bringeth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bringeth fruit, he pruneth it, listen, that it may bring more fruit. So there's times in our life when God's going to trim us back just a little bit. We, we, uh, I am, I'm blessed at the parsonage here when we, we moved there. Uh, I had a lady that I used to work with at Bassett Industry that said, Do you like irises? And when she said that, I thought we were talking about something to eat. I didn't realize it was a flower. So I automatically said, well, yeah, I ain't never missed a meal. She said, no, the flowers. So I go by, she says, well, I know you. She, she knew my grandmother. She knew Jewel and uh, Jewel Ayers, my mama's mama. She says, well, she has given me flowers that you plant. And she hadn't. They look like they look like little sweet potatoes, the, the buds, iris and buds, you guys know. So she, she brought a pass of them to work, and I took them, and, and I did the best I could, Brother Curtis. I, and, you know, I scratched the ground and put them in the ground, and it's okay. Well, over the years, they've come up and they, and they just they bloom and they blossom and they get about this high and, and they're, they're 
they're vividly purple. I, I mean, I can't explain to you how beautiful purple they are. And every time I see that, I imagine the love that my grandma had for little Hanky. All my life, no matter how big I got, Brother Jerry, I was little Hanky to her. And I remember the day that she was passing away. I'm laying in the hospital bed, and I looked at her and said, Granny, you okay? She put her hands, little frail hands on my face, and she said, I'm just tired. And I said, Granny, it's okay. So every day I see that those beautiful flowers when they bloom and they blossom, and I think, oh, what life that gives. Oh, just staying connected. What happens if you take a flower out of the ground? No matter how beautiful they are, Sister Betty, eventually they're going to die. What happens when you take a fish out of water? Someone will live for a while, but eventually it's going to die. What happens if you and I, if you and I right here, here today, if we stop breathing, there's going to come a time when we pass out. And by the grace of God, somebody y'all in here knows how to do CPR and keep that blood pumping, give those rescue breaths, and bring and resuscitate life back into someone. Same thing is with us. If we remove ourselves, I'm telling you, it's us. If we remove ourselves from God, where is life sustaining? All of us sitting in here, if you want to start telling the stories on yourself, can realize real fast where life could have ended. I can name six or seven accidents that I've been in in my 53 years that if God hadn't been there that day, His angels protecting me, I would be dead. I shared a picture of a truck that me and my son wrecked on one Martin Luther King Monday. And I took those pictures and got them, and I was showing some folks. He said, well, he said, I know somebody had to die in this accident. I said, no. Believe it or not, as big as I am, I crawled out that little bit of back glass. I thought my shoulder was broken, but the seatbelt broke my collarbone. The impact was so hard. Red stood there and took my pocket knife and had to cut my son out of the seatbelt. He's hanging upside down, and when he fell, he chunked his little noggin. Some of that could be what's wrong with him today. No, I'm kidding. But uh, got that squared away for him. And we're standing there and having to look up. God is such a blessing. And my mom and dad had passed the accident. Had saw it and passed the accident. And probably God knew that it wasn't the time for that, my dad to see me like that. My mom see me. But look up and there's Rhonda and Wayne Clark. Hank, are you okay? Man, my sister and my brother-in-law. Next thing you know, my wife gets a phone call, and they all jet over to, they all jet over to the hospital. And that was, a, that was the first, and to date, the only time me and my son shared an ambulance. We don't want that to happen anymore. But realizing that that life sustaining, I had to stay connected. To they want to put an IV in me. They want to put oxygen on me. They want to make sure that the things had to happen. But I had to stay connected. The Word of God again tells us here that that uh, every branch that brings fruit. He purgeth it, and that it may, may bring forth more fruit. I remember hearing George Myers saying just something simple. He said, you pruned if you do, and you pruned if you don't. Because if we're not bringing forth fruit, then we're going to be cast down. So our life today is fruit. So what is fruit for us? He says, what are others seeing in us? You know, we say we don't judge one another, but we also like to say the church words is, well, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. If I'm connected to the vine, then I'm bringing forth what the vine's bringing, right? Right, is that right? So if I'm connected to Jesus Christ, should I not be bringing forth the fruit that he's providing? The word tells us in Galatians chapter 5, Verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23 says, Meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. How many times in our day do we challenge this verse to see what we're producing, what others are seeing? It isn't easy when families come against you. It's not easy. 
It's not easy when you put blended families together. You're always running. I remember when our children were little, me and Lou seemed like we was always running. And still yet today, sometimes it can be that way. But the love of Christ, the love of God that we share, that we shine abroad, helps change that dynamic. So we see the, see the love that God's going to produce inside of us. And, and sometimes it's not easy, Brother Jerry, to love everybody. I'll be honest with you. It's not easy. But we need to get out there and get at it. If you think you're in a relationship with somebody to change somebody, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Chances are, my, my, when me and my wife got together, my mom uh, looked at her and said, you must love him because you, <laughs> you must love him because he ain't got no money. <laughs> he, he, he's, and he's hard-headed. He's just like his daddy. So you must love him for who he is. So I was blessed, and I'm blessed today. Sister Betty, what God's put in our heart is love for one another. There's things that our family, family's close. But there's times you struggle to see love in what's going on. There's times you struggle to see joy. Joy, joy, is, joy is deep. Joy resonates inside your heart. It's not like happy. You can be you can put on you can put on happy. You can fake a phone call you want to and just smile. But joy is deep. Folks will come to you and say, Man, how are you always smiling? How are you always happy? Because the joy maker inside of me, Jesus Christ, lives that. Now I'll be honest with you, there's times where I have to dig deep to find it. And if you don't, then come and share with me and tell me how it's always on for you. I want to know. You, I want to know. Peace is another one that resides inside the peaceful, right? So how do you maintain peace when it seems like everything around you is falling down? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, Hank. Settle down. Pull it back just a little bit. Find out where you are. I love the scripture in Romans as we talk about the vine and us staying connected. And as we stay connected, we're bearing fruit. It says in Romans chapter 8 and 25, 35, excuse me, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And it goes on to list. I like to take that who word and guys give me just a little bit of latitude this morning in the word of God. And it's not only who, but it's who, what, where, when, and why. What can separate you from the love of Christ? The who is you. Everybody here knows that you are what they consider a free will moral agent. You don't have to serve Christ. Matter of fact, me and Sister Donna this morning was sharing that there's been folks that I've met in airports, the Buddhists, the Hindus, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints. I mean, they're, they're not ashamed, Brother Curtis, to come and share with you who they believe is their God. We've served, we've served a family that, that are Jordanians and they're Muslim by religion and, and they were not, they would not share with me, a white man, their faith. You can't get it, son. I said, what? Of course, at a professional setting, we, we can't ask those questions. We stay away from that like that. But he just kind of had his nose. And the dad's a great guy. I'm not trying to paint him as not being a guy. But in his mindset, in his religion, there was things, there was cultural things more important than love, peace, joy, happiness. And he, and he kept calling us, you Christian folk. Now, if you hadn't ever been at a place where... You know, it's one thing to be denominationally separated from the Baptists and the Church of God. and you know, But it's a different thing to be completely culturally separated from who you call God. It's a different, it's a different world for those folks. They don't see that. So I go back, Brother Jerry, and I want to find out, says, well, where does your peace reside? Where does your love reside? How do you make it happen every day? Some of those questions they have no answer to. They believe strictly, 
and a cultural mandate versus the love of God that allows us to share with others. So if we know in John chapter 15 that, that Jesus is the vine and God is the husbandman and we are the branches, uh, uh, there has been a lot of folks do some gene splicing, if you will. And uh, I believe Brother Zeke and I were sharing there, 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 there's a certain tree that will have red apples on one side and yellow apples on another side. And they've done some, they've done some things at a, at a biological level where they can make that happen. But you know what? A tree is known by the fruit it bears, but fruit within itself is generated through the cycle of life. I love the analogy I heard. I believe it was... Dr. David Jeremiah said one time, he said, I can tell you how many seeds are in an apple, but what I can't tell you is how many apples are in a seed. So you start thinking about that. Well, you take one seed, you plant one seed, it grows one tree. Well, one tree, how many apples does that one tree have? And inside those apples, how many seeds are in each apple? And not only for one season, but for every season that that tree produces. So inside of us, the dynamic of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, what can it produce inside of you? Fertile ground. What can it do? How many lives sitting in here today have been changed, can be changed, and are going to be changed because of you and the love of God inside of you? It's a big number. It's a big number. Because every day you share. Every day the fruit that you bear is seen by others. Oh, oh me, or amen. And this is not, I love John Bevere. On the, on the video, Sister Gail, John Bevere has said there was a time when he was accused of beating the sheep. I didn't catch that until a couple times I said, wow, you know. There's times we want to come here and, and, and we've done a real bad job of being Christ-like through the week and we feel like we need a little. I got a bunch of whoopings from my daddy. But I didn't realize the dynamic of when he said, this son, this hurts me more than it does you until I had to whoop my own son. And sometimes I still don't believe that, but, you know, that's what we say anyway. I remember having, uh, we was playing basketball, and my son wanted someone else to be coach versus me, and, and uh, it broke my heart. Went outside and sat on, the, sat on the steps, and I was crying so hard I had the snubs. You guys have had that. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, I could hardly catch my breath. And my wife come outside, she was standing, she put her, I still remember this day, she put her hands on her head and turned my head around. He said, what's wrong? But don't, don't want me to be his coach. And I was just crying. It broke my heart. Oh, I was hurting so bad. I mean, I felt like I'd just been discarded. I said, I, you know, what am I doing? But then he came outside, and he was just like, oh, I'm, I'm okay. He's eight, nine years old. He's just bouncing around, and I'm crying like I, you know, like somebody. Said. He said, Daddy, what's wrong? I said, and I don't look at him. what do you mean what's wrong? He said, Daddy, you don't understand. He says, when you're the coach, you got to pull for all the boys on the team. But when you're sitting in the stands, you can just root for me. Well, I sucked that snub it up real quick, and I dried them eyes, boy, wiped my nose. I felt good because I had an explanation of what his perception of me was. Same thing for us in the love of Christ. When we start talking about the fruits of the Spirit and how dynamic they are, I mean, you look at love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance against such there is no law. When you look at that ability to shed that and shine that into someone else's life, how quickly can you change somebody by the words you speak? Both ways. Have you ever said something and wish you could grab those words and pull them back? Mm. Lord, help us, Brother Sid, to get to the point where we process that before we say. It could happen today. But the God that we serve understands that, Hank, you're doing better, son. 
But I got to get you to be, listen to me, Christ like. The example that he set inside God's word for us to follow is our mandate. It's our duty, Brother Jerry. These two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God and love your neighbors. The house that uh, Lisa and Joy live in in Fieldale, our neighbor was Miss Hall. And Ernest and Jeanette Carter, who we bought the home from, had planted bamboo to stop the erosion of the creek that runs by the house. And bam bamboo some aggressive stuff. I, you know, anybody that's ever dealt with that stuff, it makes a great fishing pole, but I'm telling you what, as far as horticulture goes, it's terrible. Stuff grows down about a foot, then it grows laterally. And from about mid-April to about mid-July, it grows aggressively. I've seen it grow three inches in diameter and three foot in a day. It's just, it's just amazing stuff. Well, anyway, she hated that. She hated that bamboo. And one Sunday morning, Brother Jerry, I was leaving to come to church, and she let me know how much she hated the bamboo, how much she hated me, how much she hated my dog, the truck that I drove. I mean, she told me everything that she did not like about Hank. They give me the opportunity to say, Miss Hall, I'll be back over there this afternoon. And I, I did. I went over there and I took a shovel and I'd break them down. Once you broke the stalks from shooting up, it quit growing. It quit, it quit growing. So how many, in my wife, how many the years, Sister Betty, that I spent over there breaking that bamboo? Well, said that to say this. We're finally getting to a place where we're getting it all cut down. And she is one happy lady. Because now all the bamboo is being cut down. Same thing for us as we, that bamboo analogy is what we're planting in someone's life. There's certain things that shoot up in us that even we don't like. It's just better if I stay connected to the vine, I'm going to produce the fruit that the vine produces. I'm going to be able to produce love when there's somebody that's unlovable. I'm going to be able to have joy when all the rest of the world don't understand how joy can be. I'm going to be able to be long-suffering when everybody has got such a short fuse and they're ready to stop it all. I'm going to be able to stand in faith when faith seems to be impossible. I'm going to be able to love as Christ has loved. Going back to Romans 8 and 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, and that scripture continues on, but there's a question mark there. Who is always you? We're the ones. And how it's done is it's because we let something come in between us and God. God's going to prune us back. He wants us to grow. Brother Curse, He wants us to produce fruit, much fruit, and that fruit would remain. Hester gave Lou a rose bush that we took in years and years ago and planted it in front of uh, the front door of the parsonage. And that rose bush, it's beautiful. And last year it got, we have a, an American, we'll have a flagpole, but we had a flag there and, and the thorns on the bush had, would just attack, <laughs> looked like they just attacked the American, I mean stripped of any flag we hanging just stripped so my wife got aggressive and she pruned it back and, and uh, pruned it back deep. But this year when you go out there and look at it, the, the thorns on that rose bush is like an inch long. Boy got aggressive. He said, I ain't pruning me no more. He bowed up on, on us. But if you take a look at those beautiful single roses that's inside those thorns, Pruning it, pruning it back, set a platform for it to be fruitful. Set a platform for it to be gorgeous. And it's beautiful. God wants the same for you and I. There's going to be things in our life that he's going to prune us back on. But he wants that so we will bear his fruit for his glory. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have a testimony they'd like to share this morning before we before we get dismissed. Anybody. Has God been good to anybody? I know God's been good to everybody, so that's an unfair statement. Geneva.
That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If I can, I'm receiving that because I've got a lady that's monitoring my kidney functions. And I've told her that I know my God's in charge of it. But these tests that I'm doing, that they measure the proteins that my kidney does. Uh, that's going to be a witnessing point for me. I'm going to do the same thing. I know how it goes. <laughs> 